What's up guys, on today's episode, I'm gonna show you how to change the timing components and set the cam timing on your 4.6 liter Ford. So as you guys can see, I've already got all my chains and everything all disassembled, but before you go ahead and disassemble anything, you wanna do one of two things. Either you wanna have the cam holding tools, one for each head, or remove all of the cam followers off the cam. Reason being is when you take the timing chains off, if you don't hold the cams or remove the followers so there's no tension on the camshaft, the cams will rotate on their own. So there is a possibility that you could crash the motor at that point, meaning hit pistons hitting valves and possibly bending valves. Uh, likelihood's probably pretty slim, but it's worth bringing up. So do whatever you choose, either remove all of the cam followers or buy the holding tools. That's completely up to you. The other tool that you may or may not need is this. This is the crankshaft positioning tool. And all this crankshaft positioning tool does is put cylinder number one at top dead center. So the easiest way to tell that cylinder number one is at top dead center, first of all, I personally don't think the crankshaft tool is necessary. Reason being is the timing cover itself is marked where top dead center is. So if you can align the marks on the timing cover before you take anything apart, there's no reason to buy the crank holding tool. The other way you know is the timing mark on the crank gear will be at six o'clock and the timing marks on the camshaft, the passenger side will be at about 11 o'clock and the driver side will be at about 12 o'clock. All right, I gotta cut in and say something here real quick. So when cylinder number one is at top dead center, the only other cylinder that is even possible to bend valves with would be cylinder number six. I know this because I did head gaskets on this particular car that is in question in this video. So watch out for cylinder number one and cylinder number six. With that, go ahead and disassemble all of your timing components once your cams are either locked into place or the cam followers are removed. A 4.6 liter will have two timing marks on the chain and each one of those marks is at opposing ends of the chain. So there's one at this end, one at that end. All you're gonna do is that link, that marked link on the chain is gonna go on the six o'clock mark on the crank pulley. The other marked link is gonna go on the dot for the camshaft. So once you have everything in position and you're ready to actually start timing the motor, you wanna go ahead and put your tensioners on. This one here goes on the driver's side. This long bolt here goes through the oil pump and into the block. And then there's another bolt up in the head that that tensioner gets held on with. The torque spec for all of these tensioner bolts on everything except for the tensioners themselves on this timing set is going to be 89 inch pounds. All right, now that you have the tensioner on and tight, you wanna go ahead and get your chain, lay your chain on. I put the cam on first, line up the colored link on the chain with the dot on the sprocket. So the driver's side is gonna go, is gonna be the rear chain on the crank sprocket and you want all of your slack on the top side. So when the chains are installed correctly, the dot on the sprocket will line up with the marked link and the marked link on the chain will line up with the six o'clock position on the crank sprocket. The tensioner itself is marked left and right. The left is gonna go on the driver's side, 
the uh, right is going to go on the passenger side. So the timing chain tensioner on this side is kind of a pain to get in. It, uh, there's not a whole lot of room to get it into place. The easiest way I found to do it is you take the timing chain and pull the timing chain out, pull the guide out with it, put it into place, and then just kind of push on it a little bit and pop it behind the cylinder head. And then you should be able to push the, push the timing chain guide back in and the whole thing should pop into place. It's a tight fit, but you can get in there. That's what she said. Make sure that tensioner is fully seated against the block before you go ahead and try and tighten it up because the uh, threads are just aluminum and it'll be real easy to strip. The chain tensioner is 18 foot pounds. All right, there you go, guys. That is the uh, driver's side completed. I'm gonna go ahead and do the passenger side real quick. Just a quick note here, guys. Uh, the passenger side tensioner is, has been revised at some point between 2001 and 2019 by Ford. It requires a longer bolt. Uh, so you have to source another bolt. I'll put the uh, part number down in the description for you. It cost me about four bucks for this bolt but you can get them in packs of four, which really didn't do me any good, but that was the only way my local dealer would sell them, so I ordered it online for about four bucks and I got one bolt. There's the new bolt. That's with the old bolt. So, as you can tell, there's no way this is gonna work. You're gonna have to source a new one. I should say this, that only applies if the vehicle you're working on has these plastic style tensioners. Uh, I know some of the older cars have Aluminum backed with plastic much like the uh, kind of like the tension side or the uh, I don't want to say the slack side, but Depends on what you own and Sorry, you gotta you guys got to know what you own because I don't know what you have Same deal as the driver's side 89 inch pounds All right, so before you go ahead and put your uh, chain on, go ahead and put your tensioner on, or should I say your, uh, your slack side guide on. Go ahead and grab your chain. Go ahead and grab your chain. Align the marked link with the dot on the sprocket, just like you did on the uh, driver's side. I think it's funny how much people complain on the internet about these engines because, I mean, this is probably the hardest part about putting one of these together. Everybody gets intimidated by the timing chains for some reason and as far as I can tell, you line up a, a dot on the top with a link on a chain and you do the same thing to the bottom and that's basically it. You do that twice and pull your grenade pins and you're done. So why people get all bent out of shape about these engines and 
these timing chains, I really don't understand it, especially on a two valve. But as far as I can tell, they're not that bad. So once you went through and basically quadruple checked that uh, all your dots line up where they're supposed to uh, down on the crank and on the cam gears, you can go ahead and pull your grenade pins. Once you pull those pins out, it puts tension on the chain. That's it. That's all there is to it. Once you got your grenade pins released, you can go ahead and remove your cam holding tool or reinstall your uh, roller followers, whatever you guys did. But uh, after that, go ahead and keep putting it back together. I'm not gonna detail that because every application is a little bit different. But as far as timing one of these, they're all the same. All right guys, so that's the timing procedure on one of these. It's not really that hard. It's just a matter of paying attention to what you're doing. Um, one thing that I personally did before I fired the vehicle up was I changed the oil. And just because, as you guys saw in the video, the front of the pan is open to basically anything. Anything can just fall in the pan. So I changed the oil. The other thing that I did was I unplugged the crank sensor and just crank the vehicle over with the crank sensor unplugged. So basically the vehicle has a crank no start at that point. The reason I did that is those timing chain tensioners are fed with motor oil, pressurized motor oil to the backside to help put pressure on that timing chain. So I wanted to pre-lube those tensioners before I just fired the motor up and have that loose chain in there slapping around. That's something you guys may want to do as well, is just unplug that crank sensor and crank it over. I did it probably three 15 second cranks with another 15 second break in between, just not to you know burn up the starter. But um, I didn't really have any issue. The car fired right up. I've put you know a thousand miles on it almost since uh, I got this thing back together. No problems at all. Um, the chains I used, I used Cloy's chains. I'll link them down in the description. I'll link the Ford chains down in the description. Um, the thing is with the Ford kit, the Ford kit is like 400 bucks for this thing. The Cloy's kit that I bought was only like 170. The reason is, is the Ford kit comes with the gears. The gears, in my experience, really never wear out. And unless they're physically broken, there's no need to replace them. So, like I said, cost me about 170 bucks, and that's all new timing components minus the gears. As always, guys, if you like the video, hit like. If you want to see more content, hit subscribe. Thanks for watching, guys.